Good morning. The theorem is to find the general bilinear transformation which maps the half plane that is Rz greater than equal to zero onto the unit circular disk mod W less than equal to one. So the proof let W equal to Az plus B over Cz plus D with the condition that a d minus b c should be non-zero. So let this be the required transformation. And please note that here c is non-zero. Otherwise the points at infinity would correspond. Right? Okay. Now the inverse points with respect to unit circle mod w equal to 1 are yes. We know that these are 0 and infinity. And the corresponding inverse points in the z plane are okay. For w equal to 0, the corresponding point is when this w will be 0 if z is negative b over a. So this is negative b over a. And for w equal to infinity, z is negative d over c, right? So this is negative d over c. So these are the two inverse points in the z plane, right? Now because these two are the inverse points, so these must be symmetrical about imaginary axis rz equal to 0. That is the y-axis, right? Okay, so here in the z-plane, it is given to us that rz is greater than or equal to 0, which means this region. Also including the imaginary axis. And then mod w less than or equal to 1 is this region, also including the points on the circle. Please note that mod w equal to 1 means the points on the circle. And mod w strictly less than 1 means the points inside the circle, the interior points of the circle, right? So as these two are the inverse points in the z-plane, so these must be symmetrical about the imaginary axis rz equal to 0. That is if suppose I am having one point here, let's say alpha and the inverse point the other one will be here. And let this be the conjugate point but with negative sign it is lying in the second quadrant. So the inverse points in the z-plane must be symmetrical about imaginary axis rz equal to 0. The inverse points are negative b over c and negative d over c. So writing negative b over c as alpha, this one, and writing negative d over c as this negative of alpha bar. And now let's put these values back into the original transformation. So from 1, w is az plus b over c z plus d. So let me take a common from the numerator first. So this is z plus b over a. Divided by taking c common, I get z plus d over c. And because b over a is, okay, negative b over a is alpha. So I'm writing here z minus alpha. And negative d over c is negative alpha bar. So here the sign will be positive alpha bar because that negative sign will be cancelled out with the other one. Now to get the value of this a over c, we are going to use the fact that any point on rz equal to zero, that is this imaginary axis, if I take any point on this axis, suppose this point, this point or any point, let's consider z equal to 0 here. This must correspond to the point on the circle. Mod w equal to 1. So any point, not z equal to 0, but any point. So any point lying on this imaginary axis must correspond to the point lying on the circle. So in particular, I am considering the point z equal to 0 that must correspond to the point on the circle mod w equal to 1. So that let me put the value of w over here. That is mod of a over c into z minus alpha over z plus alpha bar. 
this mod is equal to 1. This implies putting z equal to 0 over here, we get mod of a over c into mod 0 minus alpha over 0 plus alpha bar. So this is equal to 1. So this will go. So this implies I get mod of a over c is equal to 1. So this mod is equal to 1. So we can write this a over c as e the power iota lambda, let's say, where this lambda is real. So the required transformation is w equal to ok. So writing a over c as e the power iota lambda into z minus alpha over z plus alpha bar. Please mark this as 2. Now let's consider one more point. Let's say z equal to alpha. If I take here z equal to alpha, I get 0 in the numerator that is w will become 0 for z equal to alpha, right? And w equal to 0 means the center of the unit circle, that is the interior point of the circle, right? So, since z equal to alpha gives w equal to 0, which is the center of the circle mod w equal to 1. So alpha must be on the right half plane, right? So alpha must lie on the right half plane because z equal to this alpha is corresponding to the point w equal to 0, that is the center of the circle, right? So this alpha must lie in the right half plane, fine? That is, r alpha should be strictly positive. So, w equal to e the power iota lambda into z minus alpha over z plus alpha bar is the required transformation that maps rz greater than or equal to 0 or 2 mod w less than or equal to 1. Now, to verify this, we have to verify this result, right? Okay, so for verification, let's consider w w bar minus 1, the value for this. So, writing w as e the power iota lambda into z minus alpha over z plus alpha bar into, okay, the w conjugate is e the power negative iota lambda into z bar minus alpha bar over z bar plus alpha minus 1. And this 2 will become 1 and multiplying these two factors we get z z bar minus z alpha bar minus alpha z bar plus alpha alpha bar over z z bar plus z alpha plus alpha bar z bar plus alpha bar alpha minus 1. And then on taking the LCM you get whole this denominator in this numerator as a difference with the first term, this one. So when you simplify this, you will get negative of z plus z bar into alpha plus alpha bar over mod of z plus alpha bar square. So this is equal to, all right, because we are talking about r z greater than or equal to zero, so this z plus z bar over 2 is your real part of z, right? And alpha plus alpha bar over 2 is the real part of alpha, right? So writing this as negative of twice real part of z into twice real part of alpha divided by mod of z plus alpha bar square. So thus w w bar minus 1 is equal to minus 4 times r z into r alpha over mod of z plus alpha bar square. Right? Okay, now let's take the conditions. Now since r alpha is strictly positive, this is the required transformation that maps rz greater than or equal to 0 onto mod w less than or equal to 1 provided r alpha is strictly positive. Yes? Okay. So since r alpha is positive, this is your positive and 
rz equal to 0. If I take this rz equal to 0, so what will I get? w w bar minus 1 is equal to 0. So this is transformed onto w w bar minus 1 equal to 0. This implies w w bar is nothing but mod w. Mod w is equal to 1. I'm getting over here this equality sign. This equality sign means the points are lying on the circle. So the points are transformed on the circle, right? So rz equal to 0 that is this imaginary axis the points on this imaginary axis are transformed onto the points on the circle mod w equal to 1 fine okay second r alpha is positive and for rz to be positive so both these terms are positive so i get w w bar minus 1 to be as a negative term right so rz positive is transformed into w w bar minus 1 less than 0 right because that the right hand side is negative here if these two are positive the right hand side is completely negative so w w bar minus 1 is strictly less than 0 this implies w w bar is strictly less than 1 which means mod w is strictly less than 1 so rz greater than 0 that is this part excluding the points of the imaginary axis because those points are mapped onto the points on the circle and the points on the right hand side of this half plane these are mapped onto the interior of the circle strictly interior of the circle because mod w is strictly less than 1 so this is strictly interior of the circle right okay third rz greater than equal to 0 is transformed into mod w less than equal to 1 right so rz greater than equal to 0 is having this region the right hand side of the plane half plane and the points including on the imaginary axis so the points lying on the right half of the plane are mapped onto the interior of the circle and the points on the imaginary axis are mapped onto the points on the circle. Hence the result. Thank you.